If you think judges don't ever get creative with punishments they hand out, then listen to this. In 2012, it was reported that a man in Florida made the mistake no man should ever make, and that was forgetting to wish his wife a happy birthday. Now, that's not really a crime and more a marital no-no, but things soon escalated. The unhappy wife and forgetful husband got into a fight, and at some point the man pushed his wife and raised his hands to her, but he didn't actually hit her. It did result, though, in a charge for domestic violence. The judge, one John J. Hurley, said to this man, You're not going to prison, but what you have to do after you leave this court is dress smart, buy her some flowers, and take your wife bowling and then to Red Lobster. That's strange indeed, but it's not the first time a judge has looked at a case and punished a person in a unique way. Shame on you. We might take the case of a 32-year-old woman from Cleveland who broke the law in 2012. Her crime was reckless driving and that involved mounting the curb in her car to get around a school bus while the kids were disembarking. That could have ended badly if she'd hit the kids, but no one was hurt. The woman was arrested though and ended up in front of a judge Pinky Carr. She pleaded guilty and had her license suspended and also had to pay $250 in court costs. That's not weird in itself, but the judge ordered another kind of punishment closely related to punishments of the past. That is public shaming. She told the woman that she had to stand on a junction at rush hour close to where she had committed her crime. She had to stand there for two days during that rush hour holding up a sign that read, only an idiot would drive on the sidewalk to avoid a school bus. Facing the music Back in 2008, a student at Urbana University in Ohio, USA, named Andrew Vactor, thought it would be cool to sit in his car blasting rap music at a volume that annoyed everyone nearby. Well, that's called disrupting the peace, and the judge first thought about fining the young man $150. This was a broke student, and it seemed the judge took pity on him and reduced the fine to just $35. There was a catch, though, and that was if he paid the reduced fine, he also had to spend 20 hours listening to classical music, such as the works of Beethoven, Bach, and Chopin. News reports tell us this man couldn't even get through more than 15 minutes and instead paid the higher fine. He was watched, apparently, by a probation officer, and he just couldn't take it. I didn't have the time to deal with that, the man said. I just decided to pay the fine. Church. A lot of church. This was actually a serious situation and involved a 17-year-old kid who'd been out in his car and had a crash. In 2012, the Oklahoma resident hit someone in his truck, and a 16-year-old occupant of the other vehicle died. The kid had also had a drink, but he wasn't over the limit. The thing was, because he was not old enough to drink at that time, he pled guilty to a charge of manslaughter even though it seemed the crash was an accident and no one was at fault. Then, the family of the deceased stepped in and did something courageous. They said it was just an accident and this kid didn't need prison time. The sister of the dead boy told the media, we don't need to see two lives wasted for one mistake. The judge then thought about what he was going to do and came up with a list of punishments that didn't involve incarceration. Some of them were what you might expect, such as wearing a drug and alcohol bracelet, having urine tests, having to graduate from school. But the strangest thing he was told he must do was attend church every weekend for no less than 10 years. Amen. House Arrest This is house arrest with a difference. So, there was this landlord in Cleveland in the 2000s who had a bunch of properties, only those properties were what you might call very run down. In fact, the landlord was breaking a bunch of building laws. The people had been living in slums and this greedy landlord with scores of properties was put before the judge. The sentence was not so lenient, with the landlord, according to Associated Press, being fined $100,000. He also had to give all the rental money toward fixtures of the houses until they were good to live in. But get this, the judge also said that the man could no longer live in his fancy house and he had to live in one of his own slums for at least six months. He would be watched, too, to see if he stayed anywhere else. Like in the last story, the judge also ordered that man to attend church. An eye for an eye. No one likes a person who mistreats animals, and in 2004 in Houston it was revealed that a 28-year-old former stable worker had adopted two horses she had worked with. Only the woman discovered that when you actually own horses it's a lot of hard work and costs a fair bit of money. She decided to just leave them outside her trailer and didn't take care of them at all. One horse was so sick it had to be killed and the other was adopted. 
she was charged with animal cruelty and did actually go to prison for 30 days, but we're telling you this because of what the judge said she had to do there. For her first three days, he ordered that she be mistreated too, and she was only allowed bread and water for three days. The judge later said she's going to get more than her horses got. Sentenced to Social Media A Cincinnati judge in 2012 found himself in front of a couple, two people that had once been man and wife but had split up. The thing is, after the break, the man said some nasty things about his ex on Facebook. This was in contempt of a protective order and the man was looking at 60 days behind bars. But the judge said that wasn't necessary and instead told the man that for 30 days when you leave this court, you have to post something nice about your wife on Facebook. Apparently though, on the 26th day of saying nice things, the man gave up and said what he had been made to do was in violation of his free speech. Sweet child of mine. We now head over to the country of Spain. Most kids have left the family home by the time they're in their early 20s and have found a job, or at least they have a job and pay something toward the rent. But a 25-year-old in Spain didn't see it that way. In fact, in 2011, he took his parents to court in an attempt to sue them for not giving him an allowance. He did this after they said, look kid, it's time to grow up. We're stopping your pocket money. Well, the man was asking for $400 a month, so it was hardly pennies. The man thought he was probably clever because he had a law degree. You might not be surprised to hear that the judge didn't see eye to eye with the disgruntled man, and instead of demanding the parents start paying his allowance again, he told the man that he had 30 days to get out of the house. See no evil. Apparently, there's a judge in Ohio named Michael A. Ciccinetti, who is famous for his unusual sentencing. In fact, he once told the press, can't stone him anymore. If they learn from it, that's what justice is all about. Yes, he's about teaching people lessons. Again, the crime happened in Cleveland. The story goes that an 18-year-old had taken it upon himself to steal something from an adult entertainment store. He didn't get away with it, and this judge said, you have two choices. Those were either spend 30 days behind bars or do what I tell you to do. The kid took the second option and was told he had to sit outside that store wearing a blindfold and holding up a sign saying, see no evil. While this is public shaming again in Cleveland, it seems it's not the same judge as before. Poor kitties. But to give you more of a feel as to what this judge does, there was another strange case this time in 2005. This time, a young woman had decided she didn't want her kittens. She had 35 of them, and instead of looking after them, she just dumped them all in the park. She didn't get away with it, although in the end, nine of those cute furry kittens went to kitten heaven. Judge Chickenetti wasn't happy and again offered the person choices, but this time three. She could either do jail time, donate to her humane society, or spend a night alone in the woods. She took the third option. ABC News reported that this is what the judge had said to the woman. How would you like to be dumped off at a metro park late at night, spend the night listening to the coyotes, listening to the raccoons around you in the dark night, and sit there in the cold not knowing where you're going to get your next meal? not knowing when you're going to be rescued. There are many more stories about this judge, but we'll move on from him. But we will tell you he once ordered a man to wear a chicken suit in public, and on another occasion ordered two young men to walk around Cleveland with a donkey after they vandalized a nativity scene. In yet another case, this judge ordered that woman walk 30 miles in 48 hours because she had not paid a cab fare. Extreme Public Shaming this happened in Texas in 2010 and involved a rather unethical couple who had stolen $255,000 from a fund that had raised money for victims of crimes. Judge Kevin Fine rightly saw this as abhorrent, but he didn't send the couple to jail for long. Instead, they had to pay all the money back, had to do community service, but they must be humiliated too, said the judge. And this was not just a couple of days of public shaming. This couple had to plant a sign right outside their house that read, the occupants of this residence, Daniel and Eloise Morales, are convicted thieves. It had to stay for years, but get this, for a whopping six years, the couple had to stand on a busy intersection for five hours every weekend holding a sign that read, I am a thief. Now that's a lot of shaming hours. Rogue Cops if you know anything about Thailand, you'll know that it has its fair share of rogue police, and that's an understatement. They've been known to take advantage of tourists and have done much worse. But in 2007, the higher-ups had an idea concerning how to let people know a cop is a bad apple on the tree. The transgressions weren't bad enough to be told to hand in their badge or, in Thailand's case, get moved to another city. 
but these bad cops were forced to walk around for weeks wearing massive Hello Kitty armbands on their uniform. They not only looked very silly, but now everyone knew this was a rogue cop. Can you add any more to this list? Do you think these people got off easy or was their punishment worse? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Most Horrifying Punishments in the History of Mankind. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.